Om Shanti. This is the Murli of the 9th of December, 2014. Essence, sweet children, never miss the study that the Father teaches you every day. Only by studying the study will the doubts, will the sunshine within you be removed. Question. What is the way to win the Father's heart? Answer. In order to win the Father's heart, never hide anything from Him for as long as the conference age lasts. Pay full attention to your character. If you have performed any sinful acts, tell the imperishable surgeon and you will become light. The Father's mercy his good wishes and His blessings are the teachings that He gives you. Therefore, instead of asking the Father for mercy, have mercy for yourself. Make such effort that you win the Father's heart. Om Shanti You spiritual children now know that there is happiness in the new world and sorrow in the old world. At the time of sorrow, everyone experiences sorrow, and at the time of happiness, everyone experiences happiness. There is no name or trace of sorrow in the land of happiness, and there is no name or trace of happiness where there is sorrow. Wherever there is sin, there can be no name or trace of charity, and where there is charity, there can be no name or trace of sin. Which places are these? One is the Golden Age and the other is the Iron Age. This should definitely be in the intellects of you children. The time of sorrow is now coming to an end and you are making preparations to go to the Golden Age. We are now about to leave this dirty impure world and go across to the Golden Age, that is, to the kingdom of Ram. There is happiness in the new world and sorrow in the old world. It isn't that the one who gives you happiness also causes you sorrow. No. Happiness is given by the Father and sorrow is caused by Maya, Ravan. Effigies of that enemy are burnt every year. It is effigies of someone who causes sorrow that are always burnt. You children understand that when His kingdom finishes, it will finish for all time. It is the five vices that cause sorrow from for everyone from the time they begin to the middle to the end of them. Although you are sitting here, it is in your intellects that you want to go to Baba. You would not call Ravan your father. Have you ever heard anyone calling Ravan the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul? Not at all. Some people think that Ravan inhabited Lanka. The father says, the whole world is the island of Lanka. People say that Vasco da Gama went around the world in a steamer or a boat. Aeroplanes didn't exist at the time that he went around the world. Trains too used to run on steam. Electricity is something else. The father now says there is only one world. It changes from new to old and old to new. It is incorrect to say that there is first establishment then sustenance and then destruction. It is correct to say that there is first establishment, then destruction, and then sustenance. The sustenance you are given by Ravan takes place much later. That is false sustenance through which you become impure and vicious. Through that sustenance, everyone experiences sorrow. The Father never causes sorrow for anyone. Because everyone here is Tamo Pradhan, they say 
that the Father is omnipresent. Just look what they have become. You children should keep these things in your intellects as you walk and move around. This is very easy. It is simply a matter of Alpha. People of Islam also say that you should wake up early in the morning and remember Allah. They themselves wake up early in the morning. They say, remember Allah or Khuda, God, whereas you say, remember the Father. The word Baba is very sweet. You wouldn't remember your inheritance by saying Allah, whereas by saying Baba, you remember your inheritance. People of Islam do not say Father. They speak of Allah, the Lord. People speak of husband and wife. All of these words exist in Bharat. When the people of Bharat say, The Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul, Parampita Paramatma, they remember a Shivlingam. Europeans speak of God, the Father, but the people of Bharat even consider pebbles and stones to be God. Shivlingams too are made of stone. They think that God is sitting in that stone and so when they remember God, an image of that stone appears in front of them. They consider that stone to be God and worship it. Where do such stones come from? They are brought down from the mountains by the streams and made smooth and rounded by the water. It becomes a symbol naturally. The statues of the deities are not like that. Sculptors carve statues out of stones with beautiful ears, mouths, noses, eyes, etc. They spend a lot of money. However, there is no question of expense for an image of Shiv Baba. You children understand that you yourselves are now becoming deities in the living form. You are not worshipped whilst you are in the living form. People worship stone when they become those with stone intellects. You are worthy of worship when you are in the living form. Afterwards, you become worshippers. There are neither any worshippers nor any images of stone in the Golden Age. There is no need for them there. Stone images are kept as memorials of those who existed in the living form. You now know what the life stories of those deities were. They are to be repeated once again. Previously, when you didn't have your third eyes of knowledge, it was as though your intellects were stone. The knowledge that you all receive from the Father is the same, but you all take it number-wise. Therefore, the rosary of Rudra, souls, is created according to how much each of you imbibes. One rosary is of Rudra and the other is the rosary of Rund, human beings. One is of the brothers, the souls, and the other is of brothers and sisters. It is now in your intellects that all of you souls are just like tiny dots. There is a song that says, a wonderful star sparkles in the center of the forehead. You souls now understand that you souls are living beings, that each of you is like a small star. The body of a soul that enters a womb is at first very small and then it grows larger. Souls continue to play their imperishable roles through their bodies. Then everyone starts remembering bodies. It is the body that attracts everyone because it is either good or bad. In the Golden Age, you don't have to tell anyone to become soul conscious or to consider themselves to be souls. It is now that you are given this knowledge because you know that souls are now impure. Because they are impure, whatever acts they perform are wrong. The Father inspires you to act correctly 
whereas maya makes you act wrongly. The most incorrect act is to call the father omnipresent. The role that each soul plays is imperishable. You souls are never burnt. You are worshipped. Your bodies are burnt. When a soul leaves his body, that soul enters another body and the old body is burnt. A body without a soul cannot be kept for even two to four days. However, some bodies are preserved with chemicals. What benefit is there in that? Christians say of Saint Xavier that his body is still preserved. It is as though there is a temple to him there. The only part of him that they show is his foot. They say that anyone who touches his foot will never become ill. If they feel relief from their illness after touching his foot, they believe that that is his mercy. The father says they receive the return of their faith. Some do receive benefit due to the faith they have in their intellects. However, if it is really if it really were like that, great crowds would go there and there would be a great gathering. The father has come here, but there still isn't a big crowd. There isn't enough space for anyone, everyone anyway. When it is the time for many to come, destruction will take place. This too is fixed in the drama. This drama has no beginning or end. Yes, the tree does reach a state of total decay, that is, it becomes tamopradhan. Therefore, it then has to be changed. This tree is unlimited. Those who have to come into the first number will come down first. Everyone has to come down number-wise. Not everyone in the Sun dynasty can come down together. Not even everyone in the Moon dynasty can come down together. They will come down, number-wise, according to their place in the rosary. How could all the actors come onto the stage together? The whole play would be spoiled. This play is very accurate. There cannot be the slightest change in it. Sweetest children, when you sit here, you should only retain these things in your intellects. In other satsangs, they keep all sorts of things in their intellects. Here, there is only this one study through which you can earn your income. You earn no income from studying those scriptures. Yes, you can imbibe some good virtues. It isn't that all those who sit and read the Granth, the Sikh scripture, are viceless. The father says, everyone in this world is created through corruption and sin. Many people ask you children, how babies will take birth there? Tell them, the five vices do not exist there. Children are born through the power of yoga. They have a vision beforehand of the child that is going to take birth. There is no question of vice there. Here, Maya even makes some of you children fall. Some do come and tell the father. Because some do not tell him, they have to experience one hundredfold punishment. The father tells all of you children that if you ever perform any sinful acts, you must immediately tell the father. The father is the imperishable herbalist. By telling the surgeon what you have done, you will become light. You must not hide anything from the father during the whole of the confluence age. If anyone hides anything, he will not be able to win the father's heart. Everything depends on the effort you make. If someone doesn't go to school, how could his character be reformed? At present, Everyone's character is bad. 
the vice of lust is the foremost bad character. This is why the father says, Children, the vice of lust is your greatest enemy. Previously, I too used to listen to the Gita, but I wasn't able to understand everything. The father is now giving you the knowledge of the Gita directly. The father has now given you children divine intellects. When you remember what you used to do in devotion, you laugh. The father now gives you teachings. There is no question of blessings or mercy in this. You have to have mercy and blessings for yourself. The father inspires each of you children to make effort. Some of you do make effort and win the father's heart. Some even die whilst making effort. The father gives the same teachings to all you children. Sometimes such deep points emerge that all their previous doubts are removed and they become alert again. This is why you must never miss Baba's study. The main thing is to have remembrance of the Father. You also have to imbibe divine virtues. If someone speaks to you about dirty things, then simply hear, but do not hear. Hear no evil. In order to claim a high status, you definitely do have to tolerate fame and defamation, regard and disregard, happiness and sorrow, victory and defeat. The Father gives you so many methods. Nevertheless, it is as though some children listen to the Father, but hear nothing of what He says. Therefore, what status will they receive? The father says, until you become bodiless, you will continue to be hurt by Maya in one way or another. If you do not listen to the father, it means you have disregard for the father. In spite of that, the father still says, children, may you remain constantly alive and conscious and remember the father and claim a high status. Acha To the sweetest, beloved, long lost and now found children, love, remembrance and good morning from the mother, the father, Bab Dada. The spiritual father says Namaste to the spiritual children and the spiritual children say Namaste to the spiritual father. Essence for Dharna The first point If anyone tells you any wrong things hear but do not hear. Hear no evil. You have to tolerate everything happiness and sorrow victory and defeat regard and disregard. The second point Never have disregard for the father by ignoring what he says. In order to be saved from being hurt by Maya, definitely practice remaining in the bodiless stage. The blessing for today is, may you be an easy effort maker who makes the one father your companion in all relationships. May you be an easy effort maker, may you be a Sahaj Purusharthi who makes the one father your companion in all relationships. Sati in Sarva Sambandh. The explanation. The father offers himself to fulfill the companionship of all relationships. Stay in a relationship with the father according to the time and make him your companion where you have his constant company and he's also your companion, there cannot be anything difficult. Whenever you experience yourself to be alone, then at that time, do not remember the father in the form of the point, but bring in front of you your list of attainments. Bring into your awareness 
the stories of the entertaining experiences of different times and experience the sweetness of all relationships and your effort will finish and you will become an easy effort maker. The slogan is, be one who has many forms and discern the many different forms of Maya and you will become a master lord of Maya. Be one who has many forms Bahurupi and discern the many forms of Maya and you will become a master lord of Maya. You will become Maya Pati. Om Shanti 1.0